Hello, future millionaires, and welcome back to the Get Rich Slow podcast. We are your hosts, Adrian Shermer, Rob Delavan, and Lance Johnson. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Adrian, and good morning, Mr. Brilliant at the Basics, <laughs> Mr. Johnson. Yes. Good morning, you all. Good to see you guys. And welcome back to part seven in an eight-part series, uh, Home Selling and Real Estate Professionals is the title of this one. Yes. Uh, episode seven in an eight part series again. And uh, this is a fun one. It talks specifically about uh, my profession. And before we dive into that, yes. I would like to talk about, it's kind of interesting. We call it the, the success story, right? We often like to, to put a little bit of joy at the beginning of our uh, podcasts. Um, this one's kind of like a roundabout. It takes a while to get to the success. Yeah, this was, a little bit. this was an interesting one. Um, uh, I talked about it before with our producing side and uh, uh, she said, um, Ashley, our producer, um, she said, she said, okay, well, this is what I'm going to call it. Don't burn bridges and do your homework. <laughs> yeah. So um, an interesting story. It actually involved uh, um, some clients that Adrian and I had worked with in the last uh, few years. And uh, what ended up happening is, is they were doing their lending with Adrian and uh, pre-approved going through uh, starting the process. And it was down to working with uh, the Delavan Realty team, my, my own company and, and my team. And um, these particular buyers were, being, uh, were getting their down payment from a family member. I think it was an aunt or uncle or something like yep. that, who was very much pressuring them to use their realtor. And hey, you're getting the down payment from them, right? You know, so yeah. um, ultimately we we spent a little bit of time with them, talked about our processes. Um, and I assume they talked to that other person. I don't know at what length or, or level, um, but they decided to go with that other person that was, you know, their their aunt or uncles, their, their down payment family members, uh, favorite person. Um, so they ended up going through a transaction um, and, uh, successfully bought a house and Adrian, I, again, I believe you did the financing Eventually. on it yeah. and they, they were able to get through a transaction and so forth. Well, uh, I didn't hear anything from them. We just, okay, Hey, great. You know, um, no problem. We get that, you know, you have a family connection. Um, you know, we wish you the best of luck. Well, they ended up buying the house and, yeah. um, we didn't hear from them for, you know, a few years, uh, I don't know, two plus years. Mm -hmm. And, Long story short, a member of my team, Rachel, um, who is the person that they had been, you know, initially talking to, uh, hears from them and they're selling the house that they had bought back then with that previous broker and um, buying a new house. Um, that house wasn't meeting their needs anymore and so forth. They're doing, you know, kind of a, um, an upgrade, so to speak. So, of course, the first question she asks is, well, why are you calling me? Shouldn't you be using the person that you had incredible <laughs> success with? Right. Yeah. Um, cause they did a great job. So this is the fun part. Um, she's, they said, Oh, well, you know, we kind of, they were a little sheepish about it. And they said, well, we made a big mistake and we went with this yeah. other person. And, um, there was some specific feedback that, that in the conversation you had Adrian, and, and maybe you can share that. Um, yeah. But their experience when they bought that house, why they said they would never, ever, ever in a million years use that person again. Yeah, it was sad because they actually had used Rachel's resources too. They had had her bring them out on open houses. And then there was just a, a super minor schedule conflict. And again, they had this, this other person and they thought, you know, they were first time home buyers. How, how different could it be? Um, very different as it turns out, because the most egregious thing that this guy did, he wasn't great at negotiating. And I, I, I mean, I could pick this apart in my own personal opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, but when he told his clients, I need this commission check because I'm in the middle of a divorce, I was bewildered. I, I like, I couldn't believe that a professional <laughs> would actually tell someone oh, they need the commission check, let alone for, for something right. like that. You know, it's so personal. It's so aggressive. Um, and he just, he wanted stuff to close and he really demonstrated to them too. Like, Hey, I'm not negotiating for you. I'm negotiating for me. I'm negotiating for my paycheck. I'm, I'm playing a short term game here. Um, and you know, what are these people going to come back to you with that kind of attitude? And it right. really stunned me because they, they did come back to 
Ray because she took the whole thing with grace. She didn't blow up on them for right. for wasting her time. Didn't um, burn the bridge, right? Didn't burn the bridge. Yeah. And, and it resulted in two transactions for her. She got to take both sides, the sell and buy. Right. And uh, so the moral of the story, don't burn bridges, number one. And then number mm -hmm. two, when you're working with professionals, and this isn't just the realtor world, um, you know, yeah, there's pretty low barrier to entry in our world. Um, yeah. You have to take a 150 hour course and pass a test. And um, you can do it in your PJs. You really can. You got to have mental um, fortitude, but you can do it in your PJs at home. But do your homework with the people that you're working with. I mean, there's, uh, you know, this is mm -hmm. like, you know, pulling from personal experience, shameless plug for you two gentlemen, but uh, I don't work with people that are part-timers um, yeah. in other industries. I certainly don't work with, uh, you know, a financial advisor who's, who's only been, you know, who just started yesterday or <laughs> does it on the side. Same thing on the lending side. I mean, um, in my personal opinion, again, I don't know how you, uh, um, you know, verify this, this legally, so to speak, but I mean, like, you, you work, you want to do your homework and work with people that truly are there to serve you and have a huge um, reference list and um, uh, past successes to back up, you, you know, their strategy moving forward. So um, long story long, don't burn bridges, do your homework, only work with <laughs> people. I don't know. Uh, that was, that was, I, I just, I'd never, I about fell off my chair when I heard that statement of, a realtor saying, don't negotiate it was egregious. anymore. Yeah. It I knocked need me off my chair. I'm getting, I'm getting lost. a divorce. I need your commission. It's crazy. So, mm. And just to hear the regret in my clients' voices. I mean, it was just such a sad story, but you know, again, lessons learned. Um, they certainly learned their lesson the hard way on their first time purchase and they won't make the mm -hmm. same mistake again. Exactly. Um, pulling out of that fun one, uh, we've got uh, our website, roi-fa.com slash events is a great place to find out what is happening uh, in our world. We do stuff all the time. Um, jump on there to get involved in some fun stuff and to get links to our individual sites if you want to contact us or find out more about what we do. In this particular episode, we are going to be discussing the home selling and real estate professional, um, excuse me. Uh, and real estate professionals based on stats received from, once again, the National Association of Realtors from July 2020 through June 2021. We use this brick of data all the time because it's highly accurate. Um, the information provides uh, an understanding from the consumer level of the trends that are transpiring. Excellent. And then um, this for is part the seven of eight, seven of eight. And for the full article, um, as uh, the viewers that are um, looking at our PowerPoint here, you can see um, it's from page nine of that NAR article titled Home Selling and Real Estate Professionals. Um, and all of uh, everything is in our works cited um, uh, below and show notes. All right, Rob, based on the statistics from this NAR article, 68% of sellers found their agent through a referral from a friend neighbor or relative, or they use an agent that they'd worked with before to buy or sell a home. How important are personal referrals to your business? Well, um, that's an easy one. Uh, personal referrals and uh, across the board, regardless of where they came from, but relational referrals are the foundation of my business. I do not do basically any advertising um, to try to get business any other way other than just through the uh, myriad of re personal relationships I have with uh, buyers and sellers themselves. And um, more importantly, or well, just as important is the business relationships of all of the people that I do business with and that I um, you know, end up partnering with um, to share those referrals across the board. Uh, so yeah, they're the ultimate importance. Um, we are a referral company in that that is the source of our business. Um, there's lots of different ways you can do it. I'm not saying that that's right or wrong. I'm just saying that that's how, you know, I've done business as long as I've been in real estate for the last, eh, I don't know, 16, 17 years. Um, there's, and the reason for that, and I think that's really the, the gist of this question. The reason for that is if I have a relationship with Lance and we're doing business with a, say a common client, the accountability for taking the utmost care of that client, whether he referred yeah. it to me or I referred it to him. And same thing with you, Adrian, is 
um, the strength of our relationship dictates the uh, in basically the ultimate accountability is actually not just to that client, but also to um, Lance checking in. Hey, how's it going? What's going on with that client? Um, did you do, you, you know, we'll actually, you know, be able to converse through, um, have you done these different things? Uh, and, um, you know, over time we figured out how each other work and the best way to serve the client that we know how. So, um, it's just, it, it, it takes, you know, it's like playing, you know, high school varsity sports and yeah. taking it to the pro level. Like it's not the same game. If, yeah. if you can bring all of these professionals to the table. And, um, you know, I learned this uh, in a lot of different ways. Uh, and I would say the culmination, we're always growing, but the culmination of that is right now is, um, you know, the fact that the three of us do this podcast, um, you know, high levels of trust, high levels of expertise. And, uh, you know, we go out there and, and we go to war for our clients uh, for each other. So I'm sure you guys have something to add on that, but uh. I'll stretch your sports analogy even further. I mean, you couldn't pluck some of the best players from every team. Uh, you couldn't, you couldn't take players and randomly chuck them together and expect the same results that you get if you have a group that practiced together. So right. um, there's a, there's a honing that happens too. the more, every time we have a transaction, we get a little bit better uh, right. at working, not just on the job that we do, but working on with each other and Good point. creating that, you know, in sales, uh, you'll hear this thing a lot, um, the triangle of trust, you get that third person in there. Um, and a triangle is the most rigid, solid shape. And, you know, that it's, it's built as a very important thing, but it really is for a reason, because it's, um, again, that accountability, like you mentioned, you know, uh, you're not just doing the job for the client anymore. It's not a cat, you know, a release into the hands. It's, uh, it's a real, you know, there's a lot of trust that has to be established and mm -hmm. it gets established as you repeatedly make that success for the clients together. Right. Um, Rob, Adrian, from a referral standpoint, how valuable, valuable is the referral relationship we all have? I think you were touching upon that. Mission critical. Yeah, mission critical. Yeah. I got to say too, there's this extra layer. I, I was thinking about this question Um you know, we go over this stuff before we, we shoot. And uh, this one kind of struck me because especially with the two of you guys, I think that we've developed the kind of professional trust that I can get negative feedback from you guys and I can give negative feedback. And we're not saying, you know, when you just get to know someone and you have this professional relationship and you're passing referrals like that, it's easy to get into a mode. I've had people I've worked with where it's like, we could have 10 successes in a row. We have one failure you're a failure. I, I hate that this happened. And I'm just going to use somebody else because that's the method I'm thinking is going to stop failures from happening in the future. And you'll watch people kind of burn their way across an industry with, um, you know, I've seen realtors that use 10 different lenders in a row. I've seen the opposite direction as mm -hmm. well. Um, and the real power comes from being able to give the constructive criticism and to go, hey, man, I think you can do this better for the client without it feeling like a personal attack. Um, and being able to, to have the power to, to take that information in and go, okay, mm -hmm. let me change my business a little bit because you're the person I work with the most. And I want to hone myself, not just for the, the best individual client experience, but holistically, how can we all work together towards this client goal? And, you know, I think uh, it was at last episode, you guys had this great success story with 12 different professionals all working together. A lot of that was because those professionals could communicate behind the scenes. And from the client's perspective, they're not having to re-explain everything. And that's some of the beauty of working with someone like you, Lance. Your team provides a packet of information to me. And that seems really convenient to me, but it's super convenient for the cu customer. They had to send all that stuff to you. Or maybe they didn't even have to because they already have their accounts with you. So I can just say, hey, give me their investment accounts for the last two months. And boom, it's in my hands. The client often goes, how much is in there? I don't even, you know, like there's, and that's such a, a power sign when the client doesn't, is so not worried about where their money is that they can just take their hands off the wheel and go, I'll just wait till, you know, our meeting every year to see where things updated. I get to focus on my own life, you know, my kids, my, my job, my, my passions and not have to check, you know, the account balances every week and panic. Um, so I think it's, it's critically important because we can be each other's coaches in a way. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, we talk with our BNI group and my message is always about processes and, uh, you know, 
we all win if the clients win. And so yeah. you start with that in mind is, yep. is, is, is how can we make our, how can we have an impact, a positive impact on our clients? How do we, how do we, you know, everything has to be for the benefit of the client. Uh, you know, it's almost without being said, but it needs to be said sometimes. Like you talked about that success story where it was about, it was about the real estate agent, not about the client. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, a refer that's not somebody I want to have a referral scenario when they're putting their own scenarios ahead of uh, the client. Right. And then, you know, what works, you know, let's say you have 10, five closes in a month, and that's a great month. And then all of a sudden now you grow in your abilities and you have staff. And then all of a sudden now it's seven to 10. And that's double, you know, it's 50% increase over and you think what works at five closes doesn't necessarily work at seven and ten if you don't have the right support staff right. Yeah. and um and so as you're scaling and your business is growing your processes have to get better and so that the client wins right, right. or more clients win right and so referrals is important you have to help people through processes and that's why I often all my members read the book, The Goal. And if you can get that, that process is going and that interaction, that communication, we're always striving to be better at communication. Right. You know, it's, it's never enough, right? And, uh, um, and so with that, if you can improve that, the relationships become better, the communication becomes easier. They don't have to necessarily communicate directly to us they can do it through our staff and that right. uh, makes it really valuable to the client. Yeah. Um, the, the only thing that I'll input into this, this question is uh, when we do refer um, our names are on the line, our relationships are on the line. Yeah. And that can be a positive um, in the sense that we know they're going to get taken care of because we trust each other's processes because we've helped hone each other's processes um, through systems and so forth. Like you're discussing Lance. Um, the flip side of that is, you know, something goes sideways, um, you know, like, I mean, it's not just my reputation, it's, uh, my referral partner's reputation. So, yeah. um, you know, it cuts both ways and, uh, the, the stakes in essence in a referral situation are actually higher, um, not lower. Uh, yes, yeah. there's a high amount of trust from the get go. So you can start off instead of from ground floor, you can start multi, you know, layers up because of the shared mutual trust, but man. Um, you know, if it goes negative, it goes negative. So, uh, stakes are high, uh, you know, not, notwithstanding legal requirements and all of the other things that we have to do in our respective professions. So I love, I, I love this and, and, you know, you guys know how much I appreciate, you know, how much care you take, um, with all of our mutual clients. Yeah. That's a cool point too, because it is, uh, you know, if you carry through a failure like that and you, you let someone show you how they respond to it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, cause every, every business has these, these points of, you know, you didn't do what you wanted to do for a client or, or something came up that, you know, causes a pain point. Um, mm -hmm. it's how does that person react to that? And, uh, again, growing that relationship is part of that. Right. Okay. So, uh, the last question I have actually is for you, Lance, um, in your opinion, uh, why is it vital for your clients to work with, uh, real estate professionals? It's a great question. Um, so right from day one, um, I've always been a proponent for real estate because of my knowledge in taxes and some of the advantages of rentals and vacation rentals and commercial mm -hmm. as a business owner. So I, I don't want all my clients to have just stocks and bonds. Yeah, I probably would make more money, but um, I think I think the world works in a balance. Uh, real estate is a real uh, commodity that you can touch and feel, whereas sometimes you can't really touch and feel a stock or a bond. You know, it exists or a commodity. I mean, you can see gold, but not too many people have gold bullion in a safe in their house, right? So, right. Yeah. Um, so uh, when you work with a if you believe in real estate, which I do, and the benefits tax-wise and so forth, and somebody making your wealth, um, then you know you got to go out there, and it's 
you know, it's buyer beware, caveante, right? And so, mm -hmm. and, and so there are things and, you know, people will go to me and they'll be like, yeah, I've been looking for houses. And I'm like, oh, how, how many have you seen? And they're like, well, I looked on Zillow. Looking on Zillow is not looking at houses. <laughs> you're only seeing the point of view of all the good stuff. You're yeah. not seeing the bad stuff. And also it's hard to determine the good bones. So all the houses now that come on the market, they're gone within a day. Mm -hmm. So now the question is, the next layer is, are there houses out there that have great bones? Right. And in the future in rising interest rates, you're going to get a good deal when you could remodel that house and have a special flip. Like there's the, you know, all the shows that are about flipping and remodeling houses. Right. And one thing I learned about all that is you got to bring it all down to the studs and redo it because of codes and, and all those things. Um, but working with a professional really goes out and helps you weigh the options of what's what could be and you know i often talk about uh the the dream over here and how do you make dreams a reality mm -hmm. and you know it the last 30 years real estate wise is going to be way different than the next 30 years mm -hmm. and you're gonna you know you're gonna work twice as hard and make less sales possibly but mm -hmm. the values will be up and they're going to really need those professionals to help kind of um bridge the gap between negotiation i think that's some of the best is you take a little bit of the motion out of it and really get down to a to a final point quicker uh and then help educate your clients about what you're going into and i think that's crucial yeah, yeah. and that works um not just you know on the realtor side um, real estate agent, um, broker, if you will, uh, depending on what state you're in, but also lending. Oh man. Um, where, where we've probably had the most problems in my experience over the, you know, last 16, 17, 18 years that I've been working in real estate. Um, the, the most difficult hurdle has always been, you know, getting unique situations, unique financial situations of individuals to fit into, um, the box that, that lending, you know, typical Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac lending standards require. And uh, that's where, you know, you have to bring a breadth of knowledge of, hey, this is how it works. And you have to have a team, you know, and that's, that's uh, the piece where that real estate professional, um, uh, the real estate, pro you know, the lender, the lending professionals is also huge. Um, and, and that relationship. And this isn't, you know, a Adrian and Rob show there's <laughs> in that sense there's yeah. an incredible amount of amazing lenders real estate brokers frankly Absolutely. financial advisors out there um you know in theory uh, we're, we're out of the portland metro area but this is a national show shoot i guess it's a um universal show right um anybody anywhere can hear it uh the concepts don't change um you you have to have what lance said somebody who's educate who was committed to educating you at the level that you need to have to be able to know what your options are and then, um, you know, try to make the best choices you have based on, you know, any given situation. And, and selfishly, uh, sometimes I think if there was a little bit more planning ahead mm -hmm. for those clients, they, you know, sometimes it's the right time to stretch yourself. And then sometimes it's the right time to consolidate things. Right. Uh, so when the market was going up, I was always like, you know, if your goal is to retire with no real estate debt, that sometimes is one person's desire for safety. Right. And so when you get those wins, you need to take those wins off the table and pay down debt. And right. I think a little bit yeah. of planning uh, goes a long way when mm -hmm. all of us are on. And so that's, that's a selfish interest that sure. clients should do planning. But I think the experience becomes um, a little bit better uh, when we can plan out should I go for a 550 home? Should I go for a 650 home or a 750 home? Right. And my question is, well, you're starting at 750 or are you starting uh, you know, at, at 650 and then now you have to settle in on 750 because the market's hot. You mm -hmm. know, and those are all discussions that helps clients go through. There's nothing worse than uh you know, it's kind of like never a bride and a bridesmaid is always. And yes, you, go right. up to, you go up to 
you know, bat for a house. And if you're not number one and you're two through 25, yep. five yeah. times over, it doesn't matter whether you're two, three, four or five, right. you're just not number one. Almost first loser, right? Yeah. Right. First yeah. Loser, second, second place, loser, whatever. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter if that experience doesn't become a positive thing. And I exactly. think a little bit of planning on what you can afford and go for, you know, interest rates still in the scheme of things are low. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know it's five and we haven't seen them for a while, but it's still a good rate. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. as good as 2.5, but 2.5 was unique as a pandemic. Yeah. When's the last time you guys lived through a pandemic? Right. It was a first yeah. for me personally. Yeah. First, first for all of us, I believe. So, so um, love it. Love it. Well, that's a wrap for our home selling and real estate professionals episodes. Please stay tuned for our last episode in the eight part series coming up next. Um, in the next episode, we will be learning about for sale by owner sellers. Thanks so much for your time today, guys. Thank you. And thank so you much. to our audience. Uh, as Rob said, it could be global it could be interplanetary i like that idea maybe there's someone out there listening on the other side of this galaxy you think the space station people are listening our i think yeah. so yeah they're looking down yeah, going know. oh maybe i they, should invest in some of this thing they need a little get rich slow in their life right <laughs> oh, all right absolutely. Thank, you. thank you gentlemen always a pleasure